Why is it that mankind's lifespan keeps getting shorter and shorter over the course of history? In ancient times, it was not uncommon for people to live well into their hundreds, with some even reaching nearly a thousand years of age. Methuselah, as recorded in the book of Genesis, lived to the ripe old age of 969. Fast forward to today, living just past 100 years old is considered a miracle. The current average lifespan worldwide is only 71 and a half years. That's a huge difference. In the generations immediately following Adam, lifespans remained relatively long. Adam himself lived 930 years. Seth made it to 912. Enoch saw 905 years. With each subsequent generation, the aging process accelerated. By the time Lamesh, Noah's father, was born, life expectancy had plummeted to just 777 years. The mudslide only quickened from there. Abraham, the patriarch who left Ur for Canaan, died at 175. Abraham's son Isaac passed at 180. Jacob, renamed Israel, reached 147. Moses saw 120 years, still long for modern times but a shadow of early ages. By the reign of King David, 70 years marked the upper end of longevity. The psalmist confirmed this, writing, The days of our life are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they be 80 years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off. No longer did men see centuries. Only decades remained. So what happened? If we were originally made to live hundreds of years, why do we now fail to even reach a hundred? Well, the answer can be traced back to humanity's first and greatest mistake, the choice to rebel against God and bring sin into the world. When God first created mankind, we were formed perfectly, without any flaws or defects. God's original intention was to make man live forever. In fact, the word death didn't exist, but Adam and Eve's decision to disobey God shattered that relationship. And one of the very first consequences was that human lifespans began to shorten drastically. You see, sin and death always go together. You cannot separate the two. Wherever you find sin, there is death in its company. When God warned Adam and Eve that their disobedience would lead to death, they probably didn't understand the extent of it. They didn't even realize that not only would they die, but everything else that was subjected to their authority, including the plants and the animals, and that's exactly what happened. God warned Adam that the wages of his sin would be death, and while physical death did not immediately follow, the process of decay leading towards it did. With sin came corruption into the genetic code of humanity. Our cells began to degrade and mutations appeared, leading to disease and aging. The perfect homeostasis that allowed early humans to live for centuries was lost. Sin corrupted more than just man's spiritual wiring. It infected the mind, heart, and body as well. What did this deterioration look like? Purity gave way to lust, innocence to violence, and health to sickness. Thorns and thistles now choked the ground that once effortlessly provided. Childbirth became laborious and painful. Joints and organs that originally moved in frictionless synchrony began to fail. Decay and deterioration set in. The perfect physiological system God engineered in Eden started to crash, and the length of our lives crashed with it. The Bible explains it this way in Romans 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way death spread to all men because all sinned. You see, with sin came death. They are inextricably linked. And down through the generations, as the infection of sin spread from parent to child, death too spread to all mankind. As humanity fell further into depravity and evil multiplied, our shortened lifespans became fixed into our genetic code. Sometimes people even tend to accuse God of being responsible for all the bad things that happen. They think that when someone dies, God is usually the cause of it. They even think that when the world encounters issues like war, floods, and all the things that affect the lifespan of people, we always tend to immediately point fingers at God accusing Him of being responsible. But the truth is, we have to take accountability for our own actions. Adam had the option to choose not to disobey God, but he went ahead and did what he wanted to do. These then gave birth to what we call consequences. So at times, we just have to deal with the consequences of our own actions. God has already done a great job by sending Jesus Christ to die for us. But even in that, our continuous persistence in sin continues to make life go in a downward spiral. In fact, if it continues that way, with man sinning more and more as the day goes by, it will get to a certain stage where just getting to 30 years of age will look like a miracle. Think of humanity like a sinking ship. Sin punched holes throughout the hull, causing rapid sinking at first. 
but God sealed off enough punctures to prevent absolute disintegration. Another name for sin is death. The more we keep on living in sin, the more our systems begin to shut down, because we are no longer getting our life from its life source, which is Christ Jesus. Of course, the curse of sin affects more than just our physical bodies. By design, our human bodies were not designed to live in sin. The spread of wickedness and violence in the world also directly contributes to the loss of life. Even in pre-flood times, when lifespans were still centuries long, God saw how great man's wickedness had become, and that every inclination of his heart was only evil all the time. The world was filled with violence and corruption. After the flood, lifespans rapidly declined in the ensuing generations down to more modern lengths. But here's the truth. The most important thing is not about death itself. Everyone will at some point die, no matter how good or bad you are. But the most important thing you have to concentrate on is how well you're living your life. By saying how well, I mean how prepared you are to meet God at the end of your days. The problem is not about death itself. It's not about worrying when you're going to die. The most important thing is to be prepared, to always be in readiness for the time that God might call you, so that this way, even if he calls you at midnight or in the daytime or whenever it is, you will know that you are more than ready to meet with him. But if you're always afraid of death, worried about how long you're going to live, you might be too focused on that to the point that you miss the most important thing, which is being prepared. As David prayed, teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. May we seek that eternal perspective. For though the outer self perishes, the inner self is renewed daily. Our mortal frames may return to dust, but our spirits rejoice before God forevermore. Today, humanity has strayed about as far from God's original design for life as possible. Greed, violence, sexual immorality, false gods, abusive behaviors, and disregard for the sanctity of life all contribute to the shortened lifespans we now experience as a norm. Even believers who have received eternal life through Christ are not immune from the physical consequences of living in a fallen, sin-cursed world. Our cells still age and mutate under the weight of genetic defects passed down through the generations. Our bodies are under constant assault from environmental toxins and stressors. We suffer violence, accidents, and diseases brought about by societal sins and our own poor choices. Until the day we are glorified, our earthly tents will remain in overall decay. But there is hope. While humanity may reap what it has sown in terms of short lifespans, we serve a merciful God who wants to restore what was lost. God promises an even greater restoration for those who receive eternal life through His Son. Revelation 21 describes the future glory for God's people, where there will be no more death, sickness, pain, or tears. Once our mortal bodies put on immortality, we will experience ultimate healing and restoration to God's original design for human life, and we will live and reign with Him forever. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.